Father, we want to thank you now as we get into the Word of God that you would feed us and uh, give us understanding. And we thank you. You've told us to grow in knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because, Lord, there is power in knowledge. When we have the right knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that gives us a great power to be able to be a greater witness for his glory. And we thank you now as our knowledge increases. Now we know, Lord, there is a knowledge of this world. We're not talking about that, but we're talking about the knowledge that comes through the precious Holy Spirit who illuminates our minds and our hearts that we might know the truth supernaturally. And we thank you for the revelation of the word of God being opened up tonight to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You know, we've been studying on the book of Revelation, so we want to cover that a little bit again tonight. And uh, Susan and me, we're in uh, chapter uh, 21 now, so we only got one more chapter to cover, and uh, we stay, try to stay ahead of, of my teaching. But um, I want you to turn, believe it or not, to Romans 11.25 to start with, Romans 11.25. Most of us know that there are people that um, sort of believe that God is through with the, uh, the Jews. And uh, of course, we know if you read the Bible, you'll find out that that's not true. And uh, so let's read that. I'll be ready. It's up on the board. Lest you be self-opinionated, wise in your own conceit, I do not want you to miss this hidden truth and mystery. Well, I wonder what that could be. Brethren, a hardening insensibility has temporarily befallen a part of Israel. To last, now notice this, to last until the full number of the ingathering of the Gentiles has come in. Someone is saying, well, why is it taking so long for the Lord to come? Well, he's not going to come until the full number of the Israel, of the, of, of the Gentiles, come into the kingdom of God. Now, everybody see that up there? Hmm? Okay. If you see that up there, then that's very important for you to remember. Now, that's why I'm a soul winner. <laughs> One reason that I'm a soul winner. Because when I've, I've studied about hell and I know and, and I can uh, sort of bring, bring the uh, brimstone down but when I preach on that. But it, it grieves me when I see people blinded. Now remember, they're blinded. Would you fuss at a blind man that couldn't see something on the table? No, you wouldn't fuss at them. You understand they're blind. They can't see. See, that woman, that atheist, is blind, Doris. She's blind as a bat. She can't see. Because a, a demonic power call, called Satan has blinded her from the glorious light of the gospel. Okay? Now, that's where prayer comes in. That's where we come in and we bind those spirits of darkness. And we ask that the Holy Spirit would move in now and, and, and show her the truth and illuminate her mind of the glorious light of the gospel, see. So we were once blind, we were once lost, we were once all atheists in a sense, but God got through to us, and he'll get through to many others too. Now let's finish reading that. What we see in there is that Christ will come back, but he won't come back until when? Somebody tell me. The full number of the Gentiles come in. And the Jews will be blinded up to that point. So there'll be a point when the full number comes in. And the rapture will come. And then God will turn his attention to the Jews. And the tribulation years will begin. And the 144,000 Jews that will be saved. The two witnesses that will be 
in Jerusalem witnessing to the world, because the world will see them on TV, many, many souls of Gentiles will come in during that period of time, and many of the Jews will also be saved during those seven years tribulation. Now those seven years tribulation is the last seven years of Daniel's uh, 70th year. So God has to fulfill them, okay? Now we go back into the scriptures. And uh, in fact, I want you to turn, if you will, to Acts chapter 1, verse 6. Acts. All right, there it is on the board. Now, <clears throat> Jesus is in his resurrected body. He's talking to the disciples. He has spent 40 days and 40 nights with them in his resurrected body, teaching them a lot of different things. Now, they didn't know everything because revelation is an unfolding thing. We have a lot of revelation today that our forefathers didn't have. 70 years ago, no preacher could get up and say that uh, the Lord is coming, coming back anytime soon. Why? Because Israel was not back in the land. But since Israel's back in the land, we can boastfully say and they've been in there for 60 or 65 years now, and we see all that's happening over there now, right before our very eyes, and yet very few people are moved by it and don't understand it. But that's all going to be moving into the tribulation years. Christians are losing their heads. Uh, a lot of the Muslims are also losing their heads. That's all part of the system of the Antichrist in place. So what we see here now in the, in the Jewish mind, I want to show you the Jewish mind in Acts chapter 1. All right, there it is right there. Now Jesus is speaking. So when they were assembled, now you find out when they, who's they? The disciples and Jesus assembled, were assembled. They asked him, that is the Lord Jesus Christ, in his resurrected body there, okay? When, uh, all right, Lord, is this the time when you will reestablish the kingdom and restore it to Israel? Okay, that's in the Jewish mind. And right on far after that, it was like that because uh, Peter had to have a vision from heaven to wake him up of these, this sheep coming down and these unclean animals, which really basically is symbolic of the, of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Gentiles, because to the Jewish mind, Gentiles were dirty. In fact, they were, no, that's us Gentiles. We were dogs. <laughs> now see, that was in their mentality. This is, uh, Peter got that 10 years back, and remember he went to Cornelius' house, and the Holy Spirit fell upon the Gentiles, and they spoke in tongues just like us. So they had to get their, their act together themselves because a lot of that back teaching had to get out of their mind where God could put something new into them of what's going to be happening in the near future, okay? Now look at that scripture again. They, see, they asked this question, when will you reestablish the kingdom and restore it to Israel? Okay. All right, now let's go to uh, Revelation, all the way over to Revelation chapter, you can go to chapter 4. <coughs> Excuse me. And let's briefly recap some things here. So we want to go to Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. Now as you go through... 2 and 3, chapter Revelation 2 and 3, when you go through that, uh, you, you will see that Jesus is talking to the churches. Remember the seven churches in Asia? Seven churches. They, they, some folks believe that they started, John started those churches. But those seven churches, Jesus begin to talk to each one of those churches and talk to them about, well, you, you've got this down pretty good. You, you know, you're doing okay here. Now, over here, you're not doing too good. And so he, he revealed to them some of the areas that they weren't doing too good in. And, uh, and, and so he was 
bringing to their memory that they need to come up in some areas and quit this and, and, and here you're doing good. I, I, I recommend and commend you for this. You're doing great. So all of those churches, that's what he did, okay? Now those churches, they say there are, they, it is a, a symbol or a type of the churches down through the years up to now. And so we'll see those same characteristics, bad characteristics and good characteristics in a lot of local churches today. But also it comes down to the individual. When you read about those seven churches, you'll see certain things. You know, that's me. I, I, need, I need to ask God to help me in that area. Say, it's, it's not a matter of him condemning, but it's a matter of him revealing something in our lives where we can correct it uh, and ask the Holy Spirit to help us to correct that. See, when you look at it that way, it's so simple and you don't have to pick up condemnation because God is for us. How many of you know our Heavenly Father is for us? He provided salvation for us. So we got to know that God is on our side. And if he brings up something in your life that should be corrected, he will give you the power to correct that. Now I teach in this church how you do that. And if you have any questions on it, ask me and we'll be glad to go through the scriptures and I'll show you one, two, three, four, how you do it. I can show a person how to get saved. I can show a person how to come certain habits. I can show a person how to come certain inward. You know, people think because outwardly they've conquered it. No, you haven't conquered it until you conquered it in your heart. See, God looks at the heart, you know. And you might not be committing adultery, but your heart is constantly committing adultery. Or you might not be uh, 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 gossiping, but in your heart you're gossiping. You follow me there? So he cleanses the heart. God is, once we get cleaned up on the inside, then we're free. Okay? But he don't condemn us because those are bad things. Okay? He just points them out that we can deal with them, you know? Okay, so in chapter, in chapter 2 and 3, he deals with the churches. Now, when you come to chapter 4 in Revelation, we're going to read verse by verse in that. You don't hear anything about the church anymore in Revelation. It's the saints. Okay, remember that. It's not taught, you know, so from, the, from there on, the, the church is, uh, uh, is not on the earth. And that's how they, one of the reasons how we know that. And let's go with verse 4 now. I mean, chapter 4, verse 1. All right, here we go. John is speaking now. Remember, John was caught up. And here's what, it's, here's what, after this. Now, notice what it says. After this. What is this? After this church age, then I looked and behold, a door standing open in heaven. All right. And the first voice which I had heard addressing me, that is John, like the calling of a war trumpet, said, Come up here. Well, we know the church is caught up with the Lord. So most Bible scholars believe that that is actually talking about the rapture of the church. In other words, John is a type of the church. Now you got to remember, in Revelation, there's types and shadows and symbolic symbols. Okay? So there's a lot of that in there. So, <coughs> John, I will show you what must take place in the future. Now think for a moment. After this, the past, John, you come up here now. Now I'm going to show you what the future is. Okay? So we know that from that point on, the Lord is going to show us the future. Okay? Now, look at, let's go to verse 2. At once I came under the Holy Spirit's power, and behold, a throne stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. Now, when I read that, I want to say, well, who's seated on the throne? <laughs> well, we know, I read the book, it's, it's God the Father, okay? So, he stood in heaven with one seated on the throne. All right, next verse. Now, that's clear. That's, that's not, now, remember, John is, this is all taking place in heaven, okay? When you read Revelation, you got to remember there's things happening in heaven, and then there's things happening down on the earth. And you've got to discern, is he talking about earth, or is he talking about heaven, okay? 
So here we see that John is looking up. He's in heaven. And he's seeing this throne. And he who sat there appeared like the crystalline brightness of jasper in the fiery sardis. And encircling the throne, there was a halo that looked like a rainbow of emerald. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's the throne. There's the rainbow uh, over the uh, throne. And, and how, can, how can you explain God's glory? <laughs> you get tied to it. So you use some type of earthly, shiny, expensive pearl or jasper to try to explain the radiation, the glory of his appearance on that throne. The light, the brightness is awesome. I guarantee you right now, if the Spirit of the Lord showed himself strong in this place right now, I wouldn't have to tell anybody to hit the floor. You could not help but hitting the floor. Okay? That's just the way it is. See, how much can our flesh take his glory? God is a consuming fire. And if he turns that thing up too much, what happened to Bob? <laughs> He, what happened to the shield? <laughs> so he, he, he comes to us. He has to turn it down to where we won't just burn up. Okay, a fry, stand, being fried, standing up. So we have to understand that, that God is so gracious. And that's why we're going to need our resurrected body to be able to actually stand before the, the presence of the Lord. All right, now let's move on now. Now you got that scene. There's this, this is what John is seeing in heaven. Now that's not complicated, is it? Everybody got that? Now nail that down. All right, now the next. 24 other thrones around the throne. So you got the throne, then you got these 24 other thrones around the throne. Okay. And seated on these thrones were 24 elders. Okay, so that's simple, 24 elders. Well, we, well, who are these elders? Well, let's go on and see what the Bible says. And the members of the heavenly, uh, uh, the members of the heavenly uh, Sanhedrin, that's who they are, they're, 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 they're ruling, they're arrayed in white, that means they, they have white outfits on, white gowns, clothing with crowns of gold upon their heads. So they're bright, they're, they're elders, they are redeemed men, okay? They are redeemed men, these, these elders are. They've been redeemed, and you'll find out later on in the scriptures. All right, next verse, now we'll move real quick. Like, out from the throne came flashes of lighting and, and rumbling and peals of thunder, and in front of the throne seven blazing torches burnt, which are the seven spirits of God, the sevenfold Holy Spirits. So we have the throne, we have the, the, the rainbow color, we have the 24 elders sitting on their thrones, we have these um, torches with, uh, you've probably seen them in the fire coming out here, 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 like pillars with fire coming out. I mean, you can, that sort of sets a scene. You can see the scene there. And they are blazing torches and they burn which are the seven spirits of God, the, the sevenfold Holy Spirits. So we see that images, we see um, these various things that represents the Holy Spirit and all of that. So the place is lit up pretty good. All right, let's move to the next verse. And I'm not, I'm not hitting everything, but I'm giving you a, a general picture. And in front of the throne, there was also what looked like a transparent glassy sea. Well, that's the floor. We got carpet on the floor here. So it's like, John is trying to describe, well, how many has ever seen the lake out here and just as calm as it can be? Just like a lake, like a mirror, just as calm. Okay, you've seen that before. So that's what it is. And as if of crystal and, and around the throne in the center at, at each side of the throne were four living creatures, beings, who were full of eyes in front and behind with intelligence as to what is before and at the rear of them. Now these are strange beasts or strange beings. They have six wings. They have eyes in the front. They have eyes on the back. Uh, 
Sometimes we have to change our mind about some of the things that God creates. Have you ever watched TV and seen some of these creatures on there that they show about awful strange creatures? You know, you've never seen anything like that before, you know? How many's ever watched that on TV? All the weird creatures, you know? So it's weird to us, but it wasn't weird to, to God. These were creatures. They were very intelligent. They had eyes. Can you imagine you having eyes on the back of your head? Mike, he's got eyes on his back of his head. Who did you see behind you? Greg. <laughs> All kind of eyes. So, uh, you know, that's really not strange, but we just have to get our minds cleared out a little bit and fun and wonderful. You know, we get, I mean, that would be a, these, these be, and you will find these beings along the way in the book of Revelation speaking and talking. Okay. God, God uses, uses those creatures in a mighty way. All right. The first living creature being was like a lion. The second living creature like an ox. The third living creatures had the face of a man. And the fourth living creatures was like the flying eagle. Well, those are symbols of, of, of some things. And when you go into the scriptures and you study about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll see those symbols rep represents the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Okay. So you check that out. But see, it, it's no need to get too... Uh, been out of shape about those creatures, okay? And Paul is, uh, John is trying to describe what he sees, you know, and that's pretty hard sometimes. And the four living creatures individually having six wings. Remember the, 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 the four creatures, they had all the other, had six wings and were full of eyes all over and within underneath their wings. And day and night, they never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, omnipotent, who was and who is and who is to come. And you say, man, don't they get tired? See, that's where we don't understand. When you're in that environment of the Spirit of God, that's all you want to do. That's like breathing. Do you get tired of breathing? Well, if you do, just quit. <laughs> See, you never get tired of breathing. They never get tired of saying, holy, holy, holy. Every time they say holy, they see a new aspect of, of the manifold presence of God. Holy. It's, it's, it's just like they're breathing holiness. It's, it's very simple, not complicated. It, it, the atmosphere is of presence of God. And that's all you want to do. Okay? And, and of course, they do other things, but... They rather just do that, you know what I mean? All right. How many get tired of eating? Nobody in here gets tired of eating. All right, let's move on. They don't get tired of that. And whenever the living creatures offered glory and honor and thanksgiving to him who sits on the throne, who live forever and ever through the eternities of the eternities. All right, next verse, 10. The 24 elders and the members of the heavenly Sanhedrin, that was the 24 elders, they got in on this thing too. The Holy Spirit really got rich. And all of a sudden, what did they do? Well, they sat in their chairs and said, hmm, that's pretty nice, isn't it? No, they fell prostrate before him who is sitting on the throne and they worshiped him who lives forever and ever. And they throw down their crowns before the throne, crying out, next, Worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive the glory and the honor and the dominion. For you created all things. By your will they were brought into being and were created. Now that's the last uh, verse and chapter in that verse. So there's the first chapter in Revelation. And that's not complicated at all. Now I want you to see that last, that last verse. As we grow down here in the Lord, and, I, and this has been my experience. John says, you have no need of no man to teach you. Well, if that would be the case, then why would they have teachers in the, in the body of Christ? So there's a teaching that comes by man that God uses to teach us. But there is a higher level that you will reach and you know when you will hit that area because when you read the Bible and ain't no man teaching you, it's the Holy Spirit teaching you. 
And that really begins to deal with the carnal mind. And there is a tremendous degree of being changed from glory to glory by the Spirit of God when you're able to, 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 to reach that level of, of, of being able to learn from the Holy Spirit as He talks to your heart, as, as you read the Scriptures and He interprets it and you just understand. You know that you know. See, when the teaching of the Holy Spirit is you know that you know that you know. Explain it. I, I, I can't, I just know that I know that I know I know. I'd like to pause here for a moment. How many understands it just a little bit? Okay. Now, if you're not there yet, and there's probably times when you've tapped into that, Okay, and I'm not saying I'm so far up there that, you know, but I'm saying that, that I am closer to that rim now than I've ever been. I mean, after all, after I'm 80, almost 83 years old, if I haven't reached some type of maturity, some type of higher walk with God by now, if I haven't been able to tap into the Holy Spirit's teaching, because it says he's been given to us to show us things to come. Okay. So there is the level of teaching that we get from one another, and that's good, and we want to keep pumping that in, but there's a teaching that comes from the Holy Spirit, okay? And you tap into that, but God has to bring you to there. You, you can't strive and, oh, Lord, I want to be there. You just have to let God do the work in you, and he will bring you to whatever level that he thinks that you may need uh, in your gifts and in your uh, talents and in your uh, service to him, okay? You take Susan, for example, we brought one of the first daughter home from the hospital and, you know, I was looking at her and, and, I, and, and I didn't know nothing about babies, you know, I, I didn't give them a second look. But here's this little skinny thing with all these wrinkles, you know, and I'm saying, my goodness, she's just... She's, and, and, and Susan had that high level of motherhood. Honey, don't worry, it'll all be filled out. And she's right, it got filled out. My daughter's up in her 60s and it's filled out. But see, I didn't have that level of knowledge, you know? For example, we were out shopping the other day and, and this woman was just telling her, that, 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 that we, in fact, we, we went to the VA, I, I got some new glasses. And boy, I'm going to look good in those new glasses, I tell you. <laughs> oh, there you are. I can see everybody out there. But anyway, this, this beautiful little girl, she's about like that, you know. And I had to stop. I said, oh, what a beautiful little girl. You are so blessed to have her. And the, and the little girl run behind the, her mother, you know. And, uh, and you know what come out of that mother's uh, mouth? Oh, she's a little brat. You ought to see her about seven o'clock at night when I'm trying to get her to, to bed. I mean, she is mean. I mean, mean. And I, I, I think, my goodness. See, that level of understanding was not in that mother that, that she was cursing her child with those words. And my heart went out. But the enemy has blinded that mother. She has a very low level of understanding and compassion and, and be ma being able to see with the Spirit. See, the Spirit can see. So we, when Susan and me left, you know, we just said, Oh Lord, we ask mercy upon that child. See, life and death is in the power of the tongue. And that's why when we talk with one another, the ones that we love, now we've all made our mistakes. In fact, when, when God began to shine the light and bring me up to a higher level of understanding, I went to my oldest daughter into her house and I sat down and I said, honey, I want to apologize. I said, I didn't have any knowledge of how to raise a, a child. And I said, you were our first child. And, and usually most people make their mistakes on their oldest child, not all the time, but because you don't know. How many mothers in here really knew how to raise a child? Some of you didn't. You know, just put, drag them along. Just, you know, shut up and sit down. You know. 
And, and, we, and we destroy the child's emotions. We destroy the child's personality. Well, let's, I'm going to get off of that. But anyway, as we grow and mature and gain knowledge and grow in knowledge and grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he brings us up to a higher brim of understanding, comprehending, uh, wisdom. It's like you know that you know that you know. You begin to know people after their spirit. That's what Paul said, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I think it's about verse 14, 15 or somewhere right in there. He says, I know no man after the outer man no more, but I know every man by, I even know the Lord Jesus like that. So there'll come a time when you'll know the Lord Jesus like that. And you may already, I don't know. But so it's exciting to grow and mature in the Lord. All right, so here we go. We finish that. Why? Worthy are you, our Lord. Now, they knew that by revelation. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, it's to receive glory and the honor and dimension. Now, now, let's take that and apply it to ourselves. Now, just be honest. Apply it to yourself. How much in you and me, and I'm putting all of us in the pot, that when we say worthy are you, we have a high level of comprehensiveness and understanding of, of really a depth of the worthiness of God. Okay, that's golden. You know, we sing that song, I want to know a little bit more about him. But only the Holy Spirit can bring us to that. So when you say those words, and as you grow in knowledge and understanding, and the Spirit does that work in you, when you say those words, <coughs> everybody knows what <coughs> is <coughs> worthy. Whew. And your knees get weak. <laughs> And sometimes you just hit the floor. All right, so much for that. All right, so there we are in heaven. Let's go to the next one real quick. I've got to move fast here. All right, now, here we are in five. And I'm going to read it real quick. And I saw a lion. Now, now, now this is still, John is still in heaven. And he sees all this in heaven. Remember the rainbow. Remember the throne. The 24 elders. Remember the, 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 the weird being with all the eyes in the front and the back and the six wings. You remember that? You remember the glass floor? You remember the torches? The, 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 the manifold uh, spirit, uh, different spirits and so on? All right, now he's still up there and he's beginning to still tell us what he's seeing in heaven. All right? Then he goes, and I saw a lion on the open hand of him who was seated on the throne, a scroll, a book, written within and on the back, clothed, clothed, and sealed with seven seals. Okay? Now you have 21 judgments in the book of Revelation. Seven seals, seven trumpets, and seven bowls. King James says vials. Okay? So you number them, 21. And all of those, the first 14, most, most Bible scholars happen in the first uh, three and a half years. And then the last three and a half is the seven bowls. And then the dealing with the uh, Babylon and the religious system, the economical system of the world and, and so forth. Okay. So that's the picture of that. So. All right, so what it said, and I saw a, a strong angel announcing in a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll? Anybody know that? Who's that? You know that, Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. okay. And who, and who is entitled and deserves and is mortally fit to break its seal. So all over the world, under the world, on the world, on the earth, in the earth, in the heaven, nobody's worthy to break the seal but one person. That's Jesus Christ. Okay? And someone says that's the deed of the earth. Okay, go to the next. And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth, I just quoted that, in the realm of the dead, Hades, was able to open the scroll or to take a single look at its contents. Next verse. So nobody was able. Notice that. On the earth, in the earth, every, heaven, none of them. 
And John begins to say, and I wept audibly and bitterly because no one was found fit to open the scroll or to inspect it. So John got all emotionally upset there. Next verse. Then one of the elders of the 24 Sanhedrin, remember that the 24 elders, they're, they're seated around the throne, uh, said to me, stop weeping, John. See the lion of the tribe of Judah. Now who's that? That's Jesus. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. All right. Uh, the root source of David has won and has overcome and conquered. He can open the scroll and break its seven seals. Okay. So there's, there's the scene. There we see the scene. All right. Now, when he starts opening those seals, certain things begin to happen on earth. The four horsemen and all the different uh, judgments of God. But we're still in heaven right now. And there between the throne and the four living creatures, beings, and among the elders of the heavenly Sahedrins, I saw a lamb. Now, who's that? Jesus. All right. I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. He was. He had been. <laughs> with seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, you try to, you know, you try to say, oh, no, 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 don't worry about it. Just move on. And because you're going to get a picture of it, all right, there's some things we, we don't you know, understand unless the, the Lord showed. Now, I could spend some time on that, but I don't think it's necessary right now because you can get all bottled up in, in that and then lose the understanding of the overall picture, okay? So we just say, well, I'll put that on the shelf right now. With seven horns and with seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God. Well, it explains a little something there. Well, I thought there was only one Holy Spirit. There is, but there's seven, many, many manifestations of the Holy Spirit. There's many aspects of his um, mannerism, his way of doing things, his character, his, his everything, many, many. All right, and the sevenfold Holy Spirit who had been sent on duty far and wide into all the earth. So basically we know that that's the Holy Spirit. He has many gifts he has everything he needs. He is God himself. So he is supreme. He's almighty. He is God. Okay, next verse. He then went and took the scroll from the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now who? Now wait a minute. He, capital H. So Jesus went and took the scroll from the right hand of him that's sitting on the throne. Who is sitting on the throne? God almighty, the Father. So, he's sitting on the throne. Now, this scroll has words on the front page. It's just like your Bible here. I have words on this side, and I have words on this side. So, that's the way it, that scroll was up. All right. So, Jesus went over and took the scroll from the, his father's uh, hand. Okay. And when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders of the heavenly Sanhedrin prostrated themselves. Now, they're going to have another uh, revival. They're going to have another worship service. <laughs> Before the Lamb, each was holding a harp, lure, or guitar, and they had golden bowls full of incense, fragrant spices, and gums for burning, which are the prayers of God's people, the saints. So that's very simple and clear and not complicated. So they're up there worshiping God, and all of this is taking place. Okay, next. And now they sing a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to break the seals that are on it. For you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased men unto God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And that's our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And they were getting all, I mean, just worshiping him and, 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 and singing. Okay, next verse. And you have made them a kingdom, royal race, priests to God, our God, and they shall reign as kings over the earth. Now, who is that? That's us. He's redeemed us. Now, notice, God, Jesus Christ, has made us, them, a king. We are a kingdom, a royal race. We are a royal race and priests to our God. And they and we shall reign as kings over the earth. Now, you always wanted to be boss? <laughs> this will be your opportunity. 
I tell you, once you're a boss, a couple of years being boss, can I just be a worker? <laughs> can I just sweep the floor? The pressure. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? <laughs> some of you do, some of you do. Okay, don't worry about it. But listen, God has a plan. We're going to rule and reign with Christ. Not only through the millennium years, but in the new heaven, the new earth, in glorified bodies. Now, brother, that's something to shout about. Okay? All right, let's go to the next verse. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels on every side of the throne and of the living creature. And I see all this is up there now. Remember, I built the picture now. There's the throne or everything we see up there. And, and the living creatures and, 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 and the elders of the heavenly saying, and they numbered 10,000 times, 10,000 times, thousands of thousands. And they had our tremendous praise time praising God. Now, boy, that must have been some, uh, must have been mighty noisy up there. All right, we see that? All right. Now, what do they do? They're saying in a loud voice, deserving is the lamb who was sacrificed to receive all the power and riches and wisdom and might and honor and majesty, glory and splendor and blessings. Now, we need to stop there for a moment. Sometimes, and remember, I'm human. Everybody say, Pastor Bob's human. Ask Susan, she'll tell you. Sometimes you could muster up an amen if you had to. You ever been there? <laughs> Let's be honest. <laughs> but, but see, there's where that new revelation knowledge comes in of what he's done for you. Who he is. He chose us before the foundation of the world to be his church. He chose us to reign and rule with him throughout eternity. He chose us and redeemed us. And so when all of that knowledge that you have comes in and it begins to uh, filter through your being and your mind and your soul, it's like, wow, Lord, how great you are. Let me put it this way, if that doesn't excite you. You go to the mailbox tomorrow and there's a check in the mail. You open it. One million dollars. See, I'm saying it's getting through to some of you. Look at it. I saw some expressions. I saw some emotional uh, life there with, within you. I mean, I mean, Susan! Look at here. We got a million dollars. Oh, my goodness. Now, what are you going to do with a million dollars? In my mind, I mean, everybody would have a little bit, you know. I'd give Mike five. <laughs> no, he'd get a big check, I tell you that. Everybody, I would share, I would share. See? Some people say, mm -hmm. I don't know nobody in this place. <laughs> That's why you ain't gonna get no million dollars. <laughs> see, see, relax, Bob. That's why we need the spirit of wisdom and revelation to rest upon us. Because nobody teaches you. You just know that you know that you know. But it was the Holy Spirit that showed you. I've often think about the, the prophet servant you remember the prophet's servant, and I mentioned him quite a bit. You know, one morning he gets up, he's yawning, and he sees this mighty army of the natural man out there surrounding him and the prophet. He runs back, he said, we're surrounded. And the prophet said, Lord, open his eyes. Only the Lord can open our eyes. And let him see how many is with us. 
how much more is with us than them. So he goes back out there and he sees this great host of mighty angels. Thousands upon thousands of 10,000 angels. I imagine his faith went up just a little bit, don't you? <laughs> and then he looked over to those other little troops and said, oh God, have mercy on me. That's just the way it is. When we connect on to God. Okay. Let's move on to the next. And I heard every created thing in heaven and on earth and under the earth in Hades, the place of the departed spirits, and on the sea and all that is in it, crying out together to him who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb be described the blessings and the honor and the majesty, the glory, the splendor, the power, the might, dominion forever and ever through eternities of eternities. And you never get tired of praising him. Just like you don't get tired of breathing. Or eating. <laughs> well, you know, you get full just a little bit. But you can't wait to that next meal the next day, you know. But that, that, and that's good. God made food to enjoy. Just think of the, 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 the what our mouth, you know, the, the taste buds. You ever think about, you ever praise God for your taste buds? I I could, I could I tell you what I could do, I could blind every one of you, and I could put this a plate. Now he doesn't know it, but in this plate, and and, and I'm, he's blindfolded, and in this plate is ice cream. Now we know it, but he don't know it, and I give it to him, and he tastes it. Could you tell me what it is? You could too. <laughs> you could by just a taste. Yeah, 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 okay, he's with me now. All right, then I put a piece of chicken on the plate. You blindfold, yeah, that's chicken, that's fish. I don't have to taste, I can smell, that's fish. <laughs> See, the, the, how can, well, that's where our spirit is. When it grows and, 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 and gets robust in God, you can sense these things. You, that's, I can go into a church and tell you it's legalistic. Just my spirit talking to me, letting me know. Same thing if I went in your house and you were cooking fish. Fish. I don't see it. I smell it. Cooking ham. Collard greens. Cabbage. Puts a good odor in the house. See, these things that we have that we don't ever see, and yet they tell us things. We have the knowledge. That's chicken. That's more chicken. <laughs> That's another chicken. <laughs> Sausage, ham, all by those tastes and smell. Powerful. Well, our spirit is more powerful than that, and we can discern. <coughs> okay. Did we go through that yet? Yeah. All right, what's the next verse? Is that, that's 14? That's 13. Got one more verse, right? Willie? Yes, sir. One more. Okay, here we go. Then the four living creatures being said, being said, amen. Now, these are the four living creatures. Somebody tell me about the four living creatures. Who, who wants to tell me about that? What do they look like? Yeah, eyes. Okay, eyes all over in the back. Yeah, and wings. Okay, we're looking creatures. Yeah. Then the four living creatures be and said, Amen, so be it. And the elders of the heavenly Sanhedrins prostrated themselves and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. All right, and all this is in heaven. And this is all in the book of Revelation. Where's the, where's the earthquake at? Well, we'll get to that. <laughs> but you see, now we're thinning that down because from, from uh, uh, chapter 4 to 16, Actually, Revelation 16, the tribulation period is over. From four. So you can say four, five, six. Let me put it this way. I'm sorry. From six, uh, four and five, no, six 
to, to 16 is the, is the tribulation period of time. Now after that is about, it talks about the uh, uh, Babylon, uh, the commercial system, the, the spiritual system, the antichrist and some things, okay. And so um, you, you'll see that there. So you got this time of these different things. Now we got about six minutes and let's go, let's go to the verse, uh, that was six, let's go to verse seven. No, that's, wait a minute, four, five, six, I'm sorry. We've done four and five now. Now we're on six. Then I saw the, as the Lamb broke open one of the seven seals, and as if in a voice of thunder, I heard one of the four living creatures call out, come. Now the four living creatures get involved again, and one of them says, come, talking to John. Now the Lord has got the, the, the scroll, and now he's beginning in this chapter one, he's gonna, be, he's gonna start opening up the, these seals. Let's move to the next verse. And I looked and saw there was a white horse who, whose rider carried a bow and a crown was given him and he rode for, forth conquering and to conquer. All right, that's your antichrist. Now what you need to remember is this. Anything that I say and it turns out to be different, different I'm big enough to say, okay, thank you. It won't upset me, okay? Okay, but I've studied this for 50 years. I'm not saying that I'm pinpointing everything, but I, anyway, you understand what I'm talking about? Because see, the, the revelation is a process, little by little, and I didn't learn all this one time either. It took years for me to comprehend and research these things out and hear other men speak on it and, and, and read and study and commentary and, and all this thing. So most people believe, <coughs> excuse me, that's a white horse. Now, the Antichrist and Satan is a copier. In Revelation 19, who comes on a white horse? Jesus. Jesus comes on a white horse. Who comes on white horses too? We do. Okay, that's all in Revelation 19. When we get there, you'll see it. So here comes the Antichrist. He's on a white horse. He has a bow. He has a um, crown. And he goes forth conquer, but he conquers to start with the first three and a half years. He conquers by deceptive, by being deceptive, deceiving the nations. Okay, the Antichrist will be like somebody that see he's got all the answers. I mean, everybody. Now remember, we're not here at this time. When John went up, we went up with John. He was a type of the rapture. So we're up there. Now all of this is down here on the earth now uh, when the Antichrist comes. So you notice, we're, the church is caught up and the Antichrist comes down. Jesus opens the seal and now the, the tribulation years begin here in chapter 6. All right, let's move on now. He conquers through deceptiveness. Very cunning because Satan is given the Antichrist his power. And where does Satan get his power? From God, okay? That Satan will do what he has to do to bring forth the prophecies of God, okay? So let's move to the next real quick line. So we understand the end. And when he broke the second seal, I heard the, the, the second living creature call out, come. Now who's the uh, second living creature? The, the, you know, the little being with all the eyes. There's four of them. Remember, there's four of them. Okay, so he gets in the picture. He says, come. All right, so the second seal, heard the living creature goes, come. All right, next, what does it say? And another horse came out flaming red, and its rider was empowered to take the peace from the earth so that men slaughtered one another, and he was given a huge sword. How many, how many of you think that, that now the judgments of God has begun to come on the earth, and now there's war? Peace has been taken from the earth, and men, are, men slaughtered one another. Okay, let's move on real quick now. So now we see war breaking out like we've never seen before. Then another horse came out flaming. I just read that. Now the peace is gone. Now there's war going on. Now, most of this, <clears throat> as you study it, the majority of things that will happen during the tribulation years, as far as I can see, 
is, is happening right over there in the Middle East, around the Mediterranean. From the very beginning, Adam and Eve was over there. Right on down to we come to the flood. We come down to, uh, to the tower. Babylon. All those nations over there. It was all over there. All of Israel's over there. Everything's over there. And many of those things don't affect the United States. But many things will affect. Like certain earthquakes that will shake the world. That will affect the whole world. So you can see that a lot of these things that are happening, even right now, nobody over here has lost their head yet. But over there, they're losing their head. And you can almost say, wow, are we in the tribulation years? Well, we just hold that. We think about it. We talk about it. We don't put it, nail it down exactly. But we know something is taking place. Because Jesus said, when you see all of these things begin to take place, why? Look up. Your redemption draweth nigh. Okay, so we don't know the day or the time, but we are not children of darkness. We're children of light. And that day will not catch us unaware. That's what it says in Thessalonians. Okay, we're going to move past here. So now, when, when he broke open the third seal, I heard the third living creature call out, Come and look. Now the third living creature, remember there was four. This third one gets it says, And I saw, and behold, a black horse, and in his hand the rider had a pair of scales and balance. Now notice this. Peace, war, men killing one another in war, and now... There's nobody to work the farms, so there's no food being produced, and so now hunger begins to happen. The scales and the balance, so everything has to be rationed out. In World War, how many was alive in doing World War II? Well, they, they rationed things out. You just couldn't go down and buy 10 gallons of gas. You might be able to buy one gallon. It was all balanced out. And then you had to have certain little tickets and all to buy gas and buy food. So this is nothing new. All right, go to the next verse. When, and he broke, right, and I heard what seems to be a voice from the midst of the four living creatures saying a quart of wheat for a Daenerys. Well, we see that, we see that. See, remember all that's together. Now, remember all of this is not happening at one, one time. I want you to see that one thing happens for a while and then th that is happening and then that sort of goes down. The next thing happens, next things happen, you understand? Then the next thing happens, okay? Now, some of the things happen all at one time, but you've got to see that in both ways. All right. So it says, and three quarters of barley for a Daenerys, but do not harm the oil and the wine. And everybody said, Amen. <laughs> That's dainty food. None of the kings want you to bother that, you know. That's for us. Well, Okay, so we'll just leave that right now. I don't have time to go into it. It goes run out of time. Go to the next verse now. And yeah, next verse. And I heard what seemed to be a voice from the midst of the four living creatures saying, I've already said that. Next verse, seven. When the lamb broke open the fourth seal, I heard the fourth living creature call out, come. So the fourth creature got involved and said, come. So God is not a, one of, uh, shows partiality. He let each one of them have their turn. You see that? All right, next verse. So I looked and behold, an a, 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 a ashy pale horse, black and blue as if made so by bruising. And some say it's like a green horse. And its rider's name was Death and Hades and the rim of the dead following him closely. And they were given authority and power over a fourth part of the earth now to kill with the sword and with famine and with plagues, pestilence, disease, and with wild beasts of the earth. Okay, now, why is God allowing all of this? First, this is, this seven years is the fulfillment of Daniel's 70th years. Okay, all of it's happening over there. 
and the Jews are involved in what we call uh, uh, Jacob's troubles. Okay, they're experiencing that, but it's affecting the rest of the world also. All right, go to the next verse and we'll close. I know the time has run out. And when the Lamb broke open the fifth seal, I saw as the foot of the altar the souls of those who lives and has been sacrificed for a heaving to the Word of God and for the testimony they had borne. Now, who are these people? These are people, remember when they started killing people with the sword? These are people that, as we go on with this, and we'll close here, but as we go on with this next Wednesday, we'll see that these people are the people during the tribulation years that believed in Christ and stood firm and testified that, and the Antichrist had their heads cut off. Just like that's happening over there right now. Either bow your knees to uh, Allah and deny your faith, or your head's going to roll. And a lot of them, are, their heads are being rolled. You see it over there right now. Yeah. Happening right now. So, are we in the tribulation? We're close. How close? I don't know. I'm not getting into that. But I'll say, this makes me make sure that I got old Bob Tilton straight. Thank God I don't have too much to change. Then God's light shines on me. Ooh, yes, Lord, I see. Oh, my goodness, i got to change all that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right, so, <laughs> so we'll leave it right there, and we'll talk about those people up there, and we'll see them later on as they're resurrected in Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. So let's pray. Father, we thank you tonight for a little insight uh, in heaven and what's going to take place I went over this lightly because we've already covered some of it. I just wanted to refresh some of the people of what we've covered thus far. Then we can move on from here. And I thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen.